Say, baby, can I be your slave? I've got to admit, girl, you're the shit girl. And I'm digging you like a grave. Now, do they call you daughter to the spinning pulsar? Or maybe queen of 10,000 moons? Sister to the distant yet rising star? Is your name Yemiya? Oh, hell no. It's got to be Oshun. Ooh. Is that a smile me put on your face, child? Wide as a field of jasmine and clover. Talk that talk, honey. Walk that walk, money. How on legs I spanked your hoe for. <laughs> Shit. Who am I? It's not important. But they call me brother to the night. And right now, I'm the blues in your left thigh. Trying to become the funk in your right. Who am I? I'll be whoever you say. But, but right now, I'm the sight raped hunter, blindly pursuing you as my prey. And I just want to give you injections of sublime erections and get you to dance to my rhythm. Make you dream archetypes of black angels in flight upon wings of distorted, contorted, metaphoric jism. Come on, Slim. Fuck your man. I ain't worried about him. It's you who I want to step to my scene. Because rather than deal with the fallacy of this dry ass reality, I'd rather dance and romance your sweet ass in a wet dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who am I? <laughs> well, they all call me brother to the night. And right now, I'm the blues in your left thigh. Trying to become the funk in your right. Is that a right? I go around the country lecturing to people, and I have a lot of people looking up to me. Mm. I am looking for someone that I can worship, mm. and I now receive and receiving the goddess that I can worship. And the day that I don't worship you, you need to chain whip my ass. <laughs> Uh, uh, Chain whip my goddamn ass. Goddamn, <laughs> Got you, bro. Because it it has to to get to the other realm. I'm going ahead of myself. <laughs> it has to be complete love. And I say now, I have one mission on the planet, and that is to completely love and worship this being. Person is only a reflection of something of, of what's going on inside of you. Your male, your, right. the male is only looking at her, his female energy. Right, his 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 compliment or her compliment. Well, actually, no. You're looking at yourself. You're actually looking at yourself in a female energy. That's what's bouncing. That's what's being reflected out. Oh. It's an aspect of yourself. Every person in your life is an aspect of yourself. Right. Good or bad. Right. Say something. Let's make love. <laughs> For once, let's be real. <laughs> what you and I do is not make love. <laughs> what would you call it, Dan? It's definitely not making love. Boning? You've been more imaginative. Oh, I got a million of them. You ever heard of the Mo Better? Mo what? Mo Better makes it Mo Better. Yeah, that's what we do. We don't make love because you don't love me. Oh. But in the meantime, I'll settle, settle for, for some of that more better. Yeah. I knew you would. Step back. Open your cup. Supposed to be beaten. 
then she's supposed to use her vocal cords. Her vocal cords start beating your eardrums, and now your organs start playing. Your chakras start illuminating. This is music. Now y'all playing each other's organs. Shit is deep, right? Yeah, let's make some music tonight, bro. I love hip hop. What do you like? <laughs> <laughs> but we have to learn how to play each other's organs. The body is a percussion instrument. And we have to start giving birth to children in their right mind. And saviors, Christ, prophets, apostles, mathematicians, scientists. But we won't if we ejaculate way too fast. In the male, the semen we know is brain fluid. The brain fluid enters the semen and moves up and down the kundalini based on whatever science he may be doing. If he doesn't know any science, it's coming right out of, the, out of his, his penis and into the female. And that's where you get a lot of thoughtless children being born. But you're also getting a lot of wise children being born also. Right, right. You see, so different types of birth can occur. The masters right. always made sure that they stopped it before it left the brain. That's high up on the body. That's the masters. They, they always dealt with the higher levels. Once it leaves the brain, you're not going to stop it. You, you may stop it from t leaving your body, but your body does not reabsorb the semen, and the semen that thus becomes a putrid and rancid and could possibly kill you. Mm. When you're in a tantric... Uh, uh, session what you would do is you when you feel the that you know that you may have an orgasm and that the orgasm may lead to an ejaculation you stop before you get to the point of ejaculation and if you have to if you're new at this you stop at the point of orgasm so that you can have another orgasm and so on and so on the very word ejaculate is synonymous with a male design function the ultimate purpose of which is to fulfill a, pre, a predetermined destiny, uh, design in nature. And believe me, that purpose is not just simply to achieve a 10 to 20 second spasmodic release of precious nerve force, energy, and fluids just for a woman or man to get their jollies. An orgasm may be likened to what is technically referred to as an epileptiform con con convulsion, or more plainly, an epileptic fit. Spasmodic muscular contractions by the body, along with an enormous output of chemical and electrical energies by the brain, show the correlation between the two. All of us must do as we come here to create. You come here to create. And you come here to learn lessons for further creation. So we must create, and we have a drive for that, and that is known as that drive, that magnetism, that sexual energy is called in technology organ energy. Now organ energy is also known as original energy. So original energy, which is the original life force or that spark or that motor frequency, which is when you're about to orgasm or ejaculate, men have spasms, a jerking motion, which resonates at 0.6 seconds, which is exactly the same as a human thought. So when we actually copulate or when we have sex with one another, the thoughts we have during the sexual act resonates with the ejaculation and the orgasm to bring forth whatever it is is in the mind of that person of, or persons at the time. Right. So the drive to have that sex is there based on organ energy, which is a flow. Now, when you see the effect of a woman's belly rising, what was the cause? The cause was an invisible one. See, when you get up inside there, <laughs> unless that little eye got some kind of eye that leads to your eye so you can see what's going on, once that sperm leaves your body, it is an invisible process that gives birth in the visible plane. And the feminine principle is the matrix by which that invisible process comes to be a visible reality. See, that's what the women got on us, brothers. 
that taught very early that the womb is where we want to get back to. You come out in nine months, like they say, and spend the rest of our lives trying to get back in. Right? Isn't that the truth? <laughs> trying to find, we do, I mean, lie, steal, hook, crook, <laughs> just to get back in. <laughs> Why? Because that is our place of rest. Look, uh, I really dig you, Nina. And I hope we didn't move too fast, you know. Nothing happened that I didn't want to happen. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Great thing. Oh, it's great. <laughs> well, you did it, cool. <laughs> so, uh, guess we can uh, hook up again, right? Mm hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Now, you ain't gonna fake me out, are you? Uh -uh. Good. Whew. I tell you, I can't stand to sleep with a woman, and afterwards, she just dog you out. You know how y'all do. Don't return any phone calls. Play me off in front of you. your friends like you don't know me, like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna get myself an omelet. You want anything else? Don't ask that question. Uh, would you, uh, like anything else? That's the water symbol. That's the first symbol or glyph written after the condensation into matter because it had just left the realm of the sacred waters of Nun. So it left the womb of Nun. So its first projection, its first memory was that experience. So the first glyph written by so-called human was the M, mother, mm. And remember Dr. Oyibo said that the universe is waves, remember? So the A, E, I, O, and U in front of the M were ways to invoke specific powers from the nun because each vowel had a specific trigger for energies within the mother. Each vowel was a sperm cell. Each vowel spoken or sung, not spoken, but sung, because all prayers, all rituals were sung back in the days, not spoken. You speak it, it takes away its magic. It is through the intonations of sound that you invoke magic. And you invoke magic through the feminine principle because all of the forces act within the feminine principle to become manifest. So the A, E, I, O, and U in front of the glyph M was a way of specializing the materials of matter to bring about a specific influence. What you have now is a curling back on itself. The attenuation of matter causes the waves to begin to curl backward on themselves. Now, the secret is that there are different kinds of waves in the universe. But the waves have an intrinsic potential because why? In the waves is the I am. The I am is masculine and feminine, but you don't know it until two of them begin to coincide with one another. And as they coincide with one another, they begin to curl back on one another, and then that's what you look up in the sky when you look through the telescopes and you see these, these things spiraling around like that. You're watching the sexual process of the I am, working to create light, to densify light until you can perceive it. 
And inside of that little incubator, life comes to being. The creator begins to manifest and will manifest itself so that it perceives itself within this little incubating chamber. You see it and call it a galaxy. It's a nursery. Check. So that's what's happening. A nursery for consciousness. And when you're looking at it, and you see it through the, 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 the visual, you're looking at symbols, you're looking at a language, you're looking at an orgy going on, you're looking at the creator and the creatrix loving one another, your voyeurism, you're watching love making going on, cosmic love making going on in the highest principles. If there's anything profound that the preachers ever said, this is one that was the most profound thing. Where he uh, had mentioned that he had some friends and he had some some friends that was that was talking about, well, you know, uh, a lot of things that they don't believe in a lot of things that's not scientific. Things that they can't see. Things that they can't feel. And so they was getting on him about the, the, the concept of spirituality and spirit. And in order for him to win the argument, he said, well, how do you explain love? Treat her good, brother. Treat her good and she will lay down and let you walk on her so your foot don't hit the mud. Treat her good and she'll do anything for you because she's just waiting to be treated good again. It isn't that she has never been treated good, but it's been so long. You know, touch her like she's satin, like she's silk. Stroke her so that the velvet could shine. You understand, brother? <laughs>